Hello everybody, it's Wendy and today we are going to make a multi-strand necklace using products from the Jesse James Beads Sweater Weather Collection and this is the Give Thanks Mix. Okay, so for our encouraging word for today is very simple, just smile. So it raises your spirits, it raises everybody else's spirits and I mean think about it, when you're walking down the street and somebody gives you a big smile, doesn't it make you feel good? So smile today, remember that. And I am going to cut probably about a 12 inch piece, 10 or 12 inch piece, just to be sure that I have enough. And we're just gonna start by stringing on this strand first. So I know that I want to use these on this strand and these on this strand. This is going to dangle on this strand. And I'm probably gonna use all the beads except for the little peridot ones. And those little peridot cubes I'm going to keep on the middle strand or the second strand with the Coriana chain just by themselves. I just thought they were so pretty and I want to do something just really that kind of showcases them. All right, so let me, do I want to put a bead bug on here? I probably should. Let me put a bead bug on here because if I don't, then I'll have my beads everywhere. <laughs> it happens. It always happens. So I'm going to put one of these on here. Okay. I could have crimped that in closed, but I don't know that I want to do that yet. So, all right. I think I'm going to put on a bead cap first and then one of these gold barrel beads. Whoops. Yes. No. The bead cap needs to be facing the bead. Okay. Bead cap, gold barrel bead, and another bead cap. Let's just take the whole thing apart. <laughs> We're going to redo it. Okay. So let's just rearrange. Um, let's see what I want to do. Let's see. Um, let's see what this rondelle looks, up looks like up next to that bead cap. That's kind of good. Okay. So let's do that. This bigger bead and the other rondelle. I just really don't like these teeny tiny beads inside this bigger rondelle. I don't think that looks good. The bigger beads look good in there, but those tiny ones don't. I could use these cones. Let's try this. So let's see what this cone looks like on here. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, let's do one of these guys. And then I'm going to try to mix in galaxy beads and these little guys. So I need to save one for the other side. Okay, so let's see what we can do here. So I'm gonna do a galaxy bead. And this mustard yellow one. Okay, then I'm gonna do this guy, a galaxy bead a rondelle and this guy. That's not going to work either. It's going to be too many. Okay, well, I may not be able to get those rondelles in here like I want to. Okay, so let's take that one off. We're going to do this bead, this little rondelle. I really want them in there because they're so pretty. And then this galaxy bead. So we've got that. Now I'm going to put my mustard yellow dangle on. Okay. I think I got it. I'm going to do Galaxy Bead, Rondell, this guy. And all I'm going to do is kind of go back to back. So if I went Rondell, um, Spacer, Galaxy, I'm going to do Galaxy, Spacer, Rondell. And then I'll do my next little flower, which I'm going to do this. Um, do the peach one next. Now I will go Rondell. Spacer, Galaxy, okay, my next little tassel, which is orange, I'm going to do an orange one, oops, I'm trying to get that in there for some reason, I don't have my glasses on, that's a problem, and then Galaxy, Spacer, and this little rondelle, Okay, perfect. And then I'm going to do this mustard one again. And then Rondell. 
hope I have enough to do this one. Spacer. Galaxy. All right, and then we'll go back to this guy. And then it would be Galaxy. Spacer. I think I'm just going to have enough Rondell. This guy. And then Rondell. Spacer. And the Galaxy bead. Oh my goodness. Okay. And the reason that I wanted to do all those, I love all that sparkle in between these flowers. I just think it's super cute. Now, in between these, I didn't account for that, did I? We're going to hang. Yep, I'm going to have to fix this. Because in between these, we're going to hang um, the pendant piece. So, I need to account for that. So, what have I got here? I need to have two beads to kind of frame. So, I think I can do a galaxy and another galaxy. And then I'm just going to hang this pendant piece in between those two coming down. I think that'll work. And then what I would do is pick back up with the rondelle. Right? No. I would pick back up with the flower. So, I got to think this through in my head. I had it, I thought I had it thought through, but <laughs> obviously I did not. Okay, so Galaxy Bead, Rondell, or Spacer, Rondell, okay, good, and then we're going to do this guy, and we'll do Rondell, Spacer, Galaxy. Yep, I'm going to have just enough. And then this guy. And we'll do Galaxy. Spacer. And Rondell. Alright, that makes it much better. Because I can hang this pendant piece down from those two beads. And it makes these two match up, which is better. All right, now I've got the rondel. I need a cone bead. I need one of the larger rondels here. My frosted glass. My other rose gold rondel. My bead cap. My gold bead. And my other bead cap. Ooh, okay, we did it. <laughs> that was kind of tedious, but I wanted to make sure that they, you know, it all kind of lined up and looked good, and sometimes it's hard to get it to. Okay, so what we're going to do now, and let's see here. I'm going to take a an eye pin, a gold eye pin. Okay, so for this gold eye pin, we're going to be hanging this leaf charm and this charm on it. So I'm probably going to use a jump ring because that would be a little hard to hook those both on just right onto that thing. So let me grab a jump ring here, a nice thin one. So get yourself a nice thin jump ring. And we're just going to attach both of these. I'm just going to put this one right on and then this one right on and just attach them to this eye pin with the jump ring. It's going to make it dangly and cute. Now I'm going to do a rondelle, a spacer, and a rondelle just like that. And we're just going to hang this right from here. So I'm going to make a loop. I bend that 90 degrees. And then I cut it off about, I don't know, half my finger's width, maybe. A little bit less. And then I just take my pliers, round those pliers, and I'm just going to roll back a loop. Okay, just like that. Now, it's very important that this hang right. So, 
you want it to hang like this and so that's pretty good for mine if you have to twist yours around let me hang this on and then i'll show you just see, we'll see if we need to twist this one around any and you could have made this ahead of time and hooked it on like when you were stringing and that would have been smart and much easier but i did not do that I had this necklace all laid out. That's what I do. I lay it out and I look at it and then I bunch everything up and decide to make a video and can't remember how I had it laid out. And I know everybody says take a picture, but um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> okay, so here we have it. So right now it's hanging kind of crooked. So I really want these to line up better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my plier. Let me put a bead bug on this other end so I don't dump all my stuff off. Because that would really irritate you guys. <laughs> it would me, but it probably would really irritate you. Alright, so I'm going to grab this right here. So this is straight. I need this to be straight. But I need this one on the bottom to twist around a little. So I'm going to take my other pliers, not my cutters. And I'm just going to, holding this one still, I'm going to twist this bottom one to where it is more the direction that I need it to be. And then we'll hold it up and see if that's good. Yep, and that makes it hang perfectly. Okay, so I've got all this, this strand strung up now. So I'm going to grab my Coriana chain. I'm not going to crimp this yet. I'm going to grab my Coriana chain. And I'm going to string on all of my little peridot by or peridot, um, not bicones, cubes. And these I just thought were so beautiful. I love the finish on them. And so I just kind of wanted to string them just together, um, simply, not with anything else really on the strand with them. So that's what I'm doing. Just stringing them all on. Just like this. And I think this is going to be very pretty, just kind of floating above that. I think that's really pretty. So what I need to do is I need to measure my, so what I'm going to have, okay, when all this is strung up, let's push it together. I'm going to have two rings here, which are gonna be this, this wire or this um, chain, and everything's going to need to hook in right about here at the rings. Okay, so that's what I'm going to need to do is put my little clamshells on each side and then crimp each end of this accordingly. Okay, so it's not very much Coriana chain that I need, just a little bit. And I'm just going to line it up. I'm going to lay it out here, make sure these are pushed together. They are. And I'm going to line it up with the ends of these. Okay, because that's where it's going to be hanging when we're done. And then I'm just going to cut, leaving just a little bit of extra. So when you're done, your little piece of Coriana chain is going to measure, if you're doing yours the same as mine, it's going to measure right at five and a half inches. Okay? So then what I'm going to do, I love these bead bugs. They're like my best friend. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take my crimp tube. Actually, you know what? I'm going to grab smaller crimp beads for this. All it's going to do is fold my beads on my wire. So I really just need small, like these little, I'd say these are like a half a millimeter, one millimeter maybe, maybe a one millimeter crimp bead. And I just need two of them, and I'm only finding one. Beads. I think that's going to be better than the tubes, and I'll use the tubes on this tiger tail here in just a minute. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little crimp bead and I'm just putting it right on the end of my chain, right there, holding it and just flattening it. I'm not doing anything special. All it's going to do is keep these beads from falling off the chain, okay? And then I'm going to take my little crimp or my little um, clamshell cover and I'm just going to set him right in here, the crimp bead right in the right in the round part of the clamshell cover this is fiddly and i'm going to close it up with my plier I, so i'm just i try to grab the tip of it with my fingernail if i can the tip of the chain which i didn't do very good and just lay it in here and you have to get this thing closed up around it 
it's not easy. Um, one thing that makes it a little bit easier, though, is if you want to add a little glue in there, and that'll also make it, you know, secure, but I don't have my glue right here with me, so I'm just going to try to make it happen, and it did. All right, so if I close this up, this little clamshell cover, and it just looks like a little bead. I'll straighten them up just a tad. Okay, so there it is. It just looks like a little bead right on your chain. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other end. Hopefully a little more gracefully than I did that one. So now we have this little tiny strand right there. And we're going to go ahead and finish off these. Now to do this, I need my light or my chain and I have to decide how long I want this to be. Now I, I measured on myself already and I usually like multi-strand necklaces that are like this to be about 12 inches of chain on each side and then your strand, okay? So I'm gonna measure, I'll take my ruler and I'm gonna measure about 12 inches. I may go just a tad less. So I think I will go a tad less. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this right here. So it's actually, I'm actually going about 11 and a half, or about a little over 11 inches once I cut this ring. And I hated to cut these rings, but it's the only way to do it. Okay, and then I'm just going to do the same. So I have, oh, it's a big ring. I'm going to have to cut one of the big rings off. Um, I'm going to do the same over here. So just line it up. You want to make it same, obviously, on both sides. So I'll have to cut this big ring off, which I can use that for something else. And then down here, this small one. Okay. And I actually have a um, pair of earrings planned for this, too, for this chain, and to match this necklace. Okay, so I've got my chain. So now, this is going to go on both sides right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to go ahead and finish it. So I need my wire guard and my crimp. I'm going to put my crimp on first. Then I'm going to go up and over with my wire guard. So right up and around like this and down the other channel. And just pull it. And then I'm going to go ahead and slip this chain on because I want this hooked directly to the chain, okay? I've put a crimp bead on. I have gone up and around with the wire guardian and then back through the crimp bead, okay? See that there? Just like that. Now what I want to do is I want to make sure that my wires are not crossed. I want to make sure they're sitting side by side. I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to bend this wire guardian in. Because I like the way they look when they're sitting a little more like that. Then I'm going to make sure that it's tight and the chain or the wire is not loose up here. You want it tight down. Okay. And I'm trying to make sure that my wires don't cross. So that's kind of important. Just to get a good crimp. You want to make sure your wires aren't crossed. Okay. Now I'm going to take my crimping pliers. I'm going to put this crimp tube in the divot. Scoot it up. Make sure everything's tight. And I'm going to crimp it down. Okay. And as you can see, one wire goes in each little channel. Then I'm going to turn this sideways and put it in one of these divots up top here. And I'm going to close it up. And there we have a little crimp. Okay. And then I'm going to take my crimp bead cover. I like to use my crimping pliers for this because it will kind of sit in this divot right here. You can hold it. I'm going to slide it on over my crimp and just close it up. You have to be very gentle with these because they will mash like, they'll mash up and get all crazy if you're not. So just very gently go around and close it. It's like a little Pac-Man. You may have to go around and kind of shape it and close it, but there it is. Okay, now I'm going to take this wire and put it down through my beads like this. And then I'm going to make sure that it's all strung close together and tight and that we don't have any um, loose wire showing. Okay, so we're going to do the same thing on the other side that we just did on this side. And I'm going to take the crimp, the wire back down through the crimp bead. 
like I said, this gets a little frilly. And I'm going to try to go ahead and go down through this bead cap and maybe through the bead if I can. Yeah. Holding the crimp so it doesn't slide down in that bead cap. And then let's push my wire and we'll see where it comes out. <laughs> Usually it pops out somewhere down here. This one's not. All right, well, it's way down in here. So grab your wire. There we go. Now I got my bead cap or my crimp down in the bead cap. So I've got to get that out of there. There we go. Okay, now I'll try to pull everything kind of tight. It's easier said than done. And it's best if you don't use big bead caps that your crimps are going to go down in, or if you just use a little bead on the end, would have been helpful, but I did not do that, so i got to fight with this. Okay, here we go. So now I have it pulled down tight, and I'm just going to try to get it up here really close without going in the bead cap so that it um, doesn't have wire showing up here. Okay? There we go, and it did, there it is. Okay. Now, while I've got this good, <laughs> I'm going to try to crimp it. <laughs> okay, so now you do have a hard time when you're doing this side to keep your wires to tell if they're crossed or not, but I just try to do my best. They look like they're sitting side by side. So I'm going to get this down in the divot part of this flyer. And again, I'm struggling with this bead cap, which is really making things difficult today. Get out of there. Yep, that little crimp just, I know this will work because <laughs> the other side worked, but it was a little easier. So again, I've got to get him up out of there. I'm going to try to hold this in my pliers and pull the wire. That sometimes works a little bit better. So I'm just going to put it in the divot, put slight pressure on it, and then pull this wire. And that, that does tend to work a little bit better. And while I've got it up here really good and tight, I'm going to crimp it down <laughs> because if I let go, it's going to fly off again. Okay, there we go. We got it. And I'm going to turn it sideways again, make my crimp, close my crimp up. There we go. And try it again some way in the world to get this crimp bead cover on. I'm going to cut this wire. There we go. That was kind of tough. It's a little bit hard when you're trying to, especially when you're using a bead cap. Now when I put this on, this is going to keep that bead cap from sliding up, so that'll be nice. So I'm just going to slide the bead cap right over my crimp, just like I did before. There we go. And just close it up a little bit. And I've got it on a little bit crooked, so let me try to fix it. I find that the second, um, the second crimp, like that end is always so much easier. When you get to this other end, it's just difficult because you've already got your bead strung on and you don't have as much leeway and you can't pull your wire as easily and, and all that. So, but you just kind of have to keep fighting with it. Make it do what you want it to do. You're the boss. Tell it. Tell it I'm the boss and you are going to close over this crimp. <laughs> You will. I will make you. And it will. There we go. Okay. All right. So we got it. A little trial and error, or a little trial there, but we got it. Okay. So here's our little, let's flip this over. This is our necklace with our little dangle. Let's get that out of the way. Now we need to hook our little, um, our little other strand on here and I'm just going to do that with a couple of jump rings so I'm just going to grab a couple I like to use smaller ones if I can now this is kind of a thicker chain so I may have to use a little bit bigger jump ring than normal than I normally would but we'll see what we can do here so here we have a couple and I'm just going to go ahead and open these up And just go ahead and put this on here. 
a lot of people edit out um, the difficulties that they have when they're beating in videos. I don't like to do that because I like you guys to see, number one, that everybody struggles a little bit. You know, it's not just easy. <laughs> and a lot of these videos that people do make it look like it's just so easy. And then you kind of feel bad, you know, you're like, wow, I have a, such a hard time. It's not always so easy. Um, but I like you to see that I struggle with some stuff too. And it might give you an idea how to do it differently than I do it. So, you know, maybe you won't struggle with the same things that I'm struggling with. So that's one reason that I like to leave um, the little snippets in there of <laughs> me struggling sometimes. <laughs> because I just, I think it's nice for us all to realize that we all do struggle. You know, it's not always so easy for everybody, but okay. We're going to hook this guy on right here. And close it right up. All right. So here we have it. I like it. I think it's pretty. And I really like, get some of the stuff out of the way. I really like this little um, strand right there just by itself. I just think it, that those pieces are, those little um, cubes are so pretty. Yeah, that it can just hang there. Okay, now I've got my um, chain up the sides. And what I want to do is, is hold this up to myself. And just make sure that it's where I want it to be. Okay, you don't want it to be, you know, too short or too long. So go ahead and make sure that it's where you want it to be. So now that we've got all that done, we're going to add on our clasp. And this is super easy. Um, all we're going to do is take a couple jump rings. And there they are. We are going to put our toggle ring and bar on and. I'm just going to take this one, and it doesn't really matter which side you hook, hook which on. That's totally your own preference, however you like to do it. But I'm just going to hook the bar on here. Now, one thing that I will show you that you got to make sure of, okay? And let, let me hook the ring on, and then I'll tell you what I'm talking about, getting ready to talk about. So, I'm going to hook the ring on over here. So you have to make sure with toggles that your bar will go through your ring. And sometimes if you have something large right behind your bar, it makes it hard to get through the ring. So I just want to make sure that this is going to work. Because see, that is not going to work. That's not going to go through there. I'm going to have to add another jump ring on here for this to be able to go through the ring. Because this, this, um, this rung of the chain is bigger than my ring. Okay, now let's try it. See, now it'll go through because it's got just that little bit of extra there. So, all right, uh, but here it is. Here is the necklace. And I like it. I think it turned out really cute. It would be really cute with brown um, or white even. So, yeah. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, please subscribe to the channel and hit the like button for sweater weather collections. <laughs> uh, they're all really, really cute. So you guys are going to want to check them out. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.